we are going to have uh, Angelos and Astrid and Nicholas, who will um, speak to us on the uh, on the state of the OSGO Live project. So let me just uh... hello. Hello, everybody. Right. So Hi. a minute, I will share my screen. Here we are, and then we can start. Okay. okay. I hope you can see it now and. It's great to hear, be here at Phosphor G 2021 in Buenos Aires. And we from the OSU live team would like to make a project report and tell you what happened in the OSU live project in the last year. OSU live is your open source geospatial toolkit. And uh, we are from the OSU live team and send greetings to the others of our team. So, Let's have a look. Uh, first, maybe not every one of you may know OSU Live, so we would like to give you an introduction, a short one. On the picture, you already can see OSU Live desktop. Um, so it's easy to use. Um, you have a lot of geospatial applications ready to use on OSU Live, and it's a GNU Linux distribution which is including the best free and open source geospatial software all together, ready for you to go. Here you can see the desktop. It's an old map from Buenos Aires. So it fits um, absolutely good to the phosphor G this year. And we provide every year um, data and um, desktop from the phosphor G where the phosphor G takes place. And um, we have around 50 open source geospatial applications on OSGO Live. There are pre-configured software projects and they are installed. And we also provide sample data sets. We have for all the projects, we have consistent overviews and quick start documentations that help you to find out about the software and to give you the first um, um, information to start how to work with the project. And we provide translations to many um, languages already. And you will see later in the demo what we uh, can offer and in which language you can use already OSU Live. So if you want to use OSU Live, you can use it in different ways. You can burn a DVD with OSGO Live, you can create a boot bootable USB drive, or you can run it in a virtual machine. We recommend that you will run it in a virtual machine. And um, then you can start. And the goal from for OSGO Live is that you don't have all the um, challenges that sometimes the installation um, brings with you with it. And you can try all this uh, great software already and also have this um, data that you can use immediately. We also care about quality criteria. So we um, provide established, stable and working software. All the projects are tested before we release the next release. We take care that there's an active community and we have a page where we provide metrics. On the screenshot here, you can see um, the summaries of the metrics from OpenHub and every metric is linked to the project page from OpenHub where you find more information about the community size, about the activity um, and furthermore. Then we have production and marketing. We have a pipeline. So we have a regular cycle, how we um, publish OSU Live. And we have different parts of people active in this pipeline. So we have the developers who provide the applications and they um, test everything and provide the new versions. Then we have... Um, the OSU Live team that builds and tests the applications all together. 
Then we have the documentation team and the translations, translators and the reviewers. So for the project teams, it's great to have translators and the documentation team writing the documentation and doing the translations. Then we have um, the conference teams. So people who run conferences or workshops, they are happy to use OSU Live in their settings and can provide um, OSU Live on a USB drive, U USB stick, or um, use it in their workshops. And then we have the website where you can get all the information about OSU Live. So for decision making, this is a good point where you can get a great overview on OSU projects. And here we want to have a look at the download statistics. So this is from the previous version, which was version 13. And you can see in the um, in two years, we had over 30,000 downloads of OSU Live. And this shows how, um, how the interest it is on the project. And if we have a look on the map and see uh, in which regions OSU Live was downloaded, it also shows you where all on the world it is used. And you have to keep in mind that um, one download it could be an ISO or a VMDK. It does not mean that it is only used from one person because with one ISO, you could provide um, a whole workshop room or you could provide thousands of USB um, drives. So this number doesn't um, yeah, show everything, but it uh, it shows yeah that it's really a big interest in, in OSG life. And we have version 14 now, which was published in May this year. And here we have already nearly 10,000 downloads already. Talking about OSG Live 14, we would like to remember Malena. This version has a special name. It's called OSG Live 14 Malena because we would like to dedicate this version to our friend Malena who had passed away short before we released this version. And we were very shocked and really um, miss, miss her already. And now I'm passing to Angelos and he will tell us more about this version 14. Thank you, Astrid. So now I'm going to talk a bit about what is new in this uh, version 14. Um, technical spe technically speaking, we are uh, inheriting stuff from uh, Ubuntu. So we have been rebased our, our distribution in to, to, to Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. This was a major change because uh, Lubuntu switched from LXDE to LXQT, so we had to reconfigure our desktop, figure out how to do the, how to change the menus. So we, we were in a, in a, in a lot, we had a lot of work to do for this new version. Um, the pipeline of, of packaging is the same, which means that we are inheriting packages from, from Debian GIS, which are going upstream to Debian. And then those are coming to Ubuntu and to OS Geo Live. But we are also working on synchronizing the OSGO Live uh, PPAs, the, the repository, with, with new packages from Debian GIS and Ubuntu GIS, which means that we are trying to get the latest and more, more, more stable packages to the, to the distribution. So we were able to, up, to upgrade m most of the projects uh, in OSGO Live, like QGIS, GDAL, PRODS, PostGIS, GeoServer, MapServer, and many, many other, soft, many, many other projects. Uh, we had new projects that were added. Uh, we added PyGeo API, GeoStyler, Registry from, uh, from, from uh, European Commission. So there are new projects that are, are, are joining OSGO Live. And um, we are trying to keep it up with, uh, with the new projects that are joining the OSGO community program. So we are trying to include all the new community pro projects from OSGO to OSGO Live, but of course we are waiting for other projects to submit their application to, to be included in OSGO Live. Uh, then we have additional Python modules uh, added, and we also have our projects that are added. So we, we have 
uh, a specific uh, interest for uh, for uh, data science. So we have Python and R and Jupyter notebooks included, and th those are maintained actively. And uh, you, we have two versions of the of the OSGO Live. One is the ISO version, which is the live version. You can run it directly from the ISO. Uh, or from a live USB. And then we have the VMDK, the virtual machine version, which has even more software this year because we reached the ISO limits. And that means that all the, the new projects are landing into the VM version only for uh, at this moment. Uh, you can see a full change log, change log of what is in version 14 uh, in the link provided here. Next slide, please. Uh, so what what else is new? We had a major update of documentation. Uh, we have a new command line tutorial, thanks to Anok and Astrid for, for compiling that. We did uh, major improvements in the OpenStreetMap tutorial, uh, and we are co co cooperating now with the uh, humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, thanks to uh, Anok and Astrid. Um, Brian has contributed many, many great Jupyter notebooks. Uh, and he's maintaining them so that data science people are happy with it and it can be used in classrooms and uh, all around the world. And we added OpenStreetMap data for Buenos Aires uh, since we are virtually even in, in Buenos Aires right now. Uh, next slide, please. Um, more stuff, we added new languages, so now we are supporting uh, the, language that, the languages that that you see here, the English, uh, the Dutch, the Dutch uh, Spanish, and, and many, many other uh, languages. We reached um, the translation levels to 100% for Hungarian, but also for Spanish, and we, we would like to do special thank uh, Martha Vergara for doing most of the Spanish tra translation. So the Spanish language is uh, again uh, at hundred percent. So please, if you are uh, interested, please join us and and add your translations. It's very important for for students to have the OSGO Live tutorials and all overviews and quick starts in their own language. So so please join us. Let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, as I already mentioned, we had several challenges for version 14. Uh, we switched to the new to the new desktop environment, and we have we had many upstream Ubuntu changes that block our, our development for a while. So we we needed extra time to to cope with that. Uh, our packaging efforts were a bit slower than usual due due, due to the COVID pandemic, and we still need lots of testing. So please, if you are interested, join us and test the dis distribution before we release it, because after we release it, it's it is more difficult to, to change stuff. Um, next slide, please. And uh, also, we are now in the cloud er era, so OSGO Live is perfect for the cloud. Um, most Debian GIS and Ubuntu GIS packages are used in Docker everywhere and uh, in also in, in virtual machines on, on the cloud. And uh, OSGO Live has been reported to work in, in to work fine in many cloud environments. Recently, we discovered that it is actively used in ESA's DIAS infrastructure and specific, specifically Creo DIAS, which works over uh, OpenStack. So we are very happy that ESA is doing work uh, using OSGO Live uh, currently. Next slide, please. Yeah, and now I'm, I'm passing back to Astrid. Yeah, and if we talk more about OSG Live in action, um, we would like to mention uh, Marco Mingi, who gave us feedback on our project. He is a scientific project officer at the European Commission, and here you can see what he says. Open source geospatial software is a key building block of many data infrastructures managed and operated by the European Commission, powering high-level pan-European initiatives such as Inspire and Copenhagen. Copernicus and the role of OSG Live to teach and promote the use of open source geospatial software has no equivalent. Big thanks to OSGU and the OSGU Live team. So this is was a big honor for us and um, hope that others also profit from OSGU and enjoy to use it. And um, I can report from the FOSKIS conference, which takes place every year in the German language um, area, that we use it there successfully in our workshops and also at FOSFOG here this year, it was 
already used into workshops. So let's have a look at our roadmap. So we are preparing for OSU Life 15, which will um, be released next year and has to be ready for the next Phosphogy 2022 in Florence in Italy. And uh, we plan to use the Ubuntu version 22. Four, and um, we want to include new OSGU community projects. So you heard the shout out already from Angelos. And we plan to include a glossary from the lexicon committee and working together with them at the moment. We want to write more documentations because there are projects that are hidden. They are installed already on OSGU Live, but the have no documentation so they can get more visibility for example it's um, pedal which is there but there's no documentation yet then we want to improve the usability for hot users you heard about maybe about the OSGO hot memorandum of understanding that was signed and one goal is to uh, bring hot and OSGO life closer together we want to improve the translations and um, yeah, if you would like to support us, please apply with your project and you're really welcome to get involved. We are a nice team and you can learn a lot and share ideas. And now we want to have a look at the projects and I pass to Nicola, who will give you an introduction. Hi, thank you, Espen. So, uh, we divide uh, all pro the whole project in 10 major categories. The first one we want to uh, show you is the desktop JS categories. It's the largest uh, desktop application, the most famous like QJS or GraceJS, but we are also uh, less common or less known uh, project like JVSIG or UDIG or OpenJump. JS or even Saga JS uh, that also embed within uh, OSG Live. So you can try uh, new uh, application, access to new algorithm within uh, the application and access uh, their uh, documentation, overview, and tutorial as well. Next slide, please. We also uh, I have uh, browser-facing JS uh, tools like Open Layers and Leaflet, which are very, uh, very well known. But you also have Cesium and Joe Styler, which are very new. And um, server application and SDA application like MapBender, GeoEx, GeoMoose, and GeoNode to help you build uh, a small uh, SDI within the application. So. Um, this documentation is also within uh, the, the disk. Uh, maybe, Angelos, we, we would like to show you uh, all, where you can find this documentation and this presentation in the documentation when I'm uh, still speaking. So if you click on the help or open the browser, you get to uh, the web page and in the contents page, we, you can you can find the 10 uh, great uh, categories defined. So we saw the browser facing JS, but we also uh, ship uh, web services. The most common are map server or geo server, but we, we have a large uh, panel of projects that can uh, provide web services. So you can try some uh, with your application and try your um, uh, processing um, chain. On the next, uh, uh, you are, we also ship uh, data store like ProJS. You can do some routing within it because we ended routing, a PJ routing project. You can so, uh, also uh, share raster uh, with a Restaman uh, server and uh, use a specialized databases. We also provide some tools for navigation and mapping like Marble. Uh, the ID editor and GeoSM software from the OSM community and other uh, uh, tools. We also have some special tools um, which are specific to a domain like uh, our Flow Toolbox, which is an um, uh, image processing tool. But we also ship, as we said, data science tools like Jupyter Notebook and R with 
the geospatial libraries. And we also have some uh, domain-specific JS like Xagrid. I'm not sure of the pronunciation, but uh, for the web forecast maps. And we also ships data uh, that you can use within the tutorials. So you have some data from Natural Earth or North Carolina. And we also have all the geospatial libraries that are used by a viewer project like GDAL, JOS, Porge, or G GTS. You can find more information about the standards that are common to uh, all those tools and allows them to communicate. Um, thank you, Angelos. I think I can, uh, yeah, we, we can access all the tools within the geospatial uh, menu. And you can see, uh, you can find all the tools uh, organized in some uh, area. So yeah, I would I would like to add a few things here. Like you can you can see here that we have all the OSGO projects marked with a with a with a color uh, uh, icon, and then we have the community projects that are joining now with uh, with the black and white. And then you can see that the the projects that are only available in the virtual machine version are are marked here as well. For for every project here, you can find uh, you can find uh, an overview. Uh, and translations are available. Uh, this is why we are asking for more translations so that we can have uh, the, the text in, in many languages. And also you can find for every project a quick start. So uh, so you can, you can actually learn by doing a simple tutorial, a simple exercise within the OSGO Live uh, DVD. The data that we are using for the quick starts are, are already bundled in the, in the, in the VM. Uh, so it's it's really easy for for somebody to 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 learn how to how to use those project projects even with a small tutorial. Um, you can find some other quick starts in the in the landing page, which is how to install it, how to create a, a bootable USB flash drive, how to run it uh, in a in a in, in another environment, um, and also there's a presentation available here, which is the presentation we are now giving. Where you can do it directly from the from the from the disk. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's about it. I, uh, if you need to find out the passwords or to see where the data are, there's a link on the desktop. We have the workshops available that are using the OSGO Live. So the desktops already that used uh, uh, OSGO Live in in, in this uh, Fos4G are there listed, um, and well. That, that's about it. We don't have enough time to, to, to go through a quick start or something similar, but um, we can have some questions and answers now. Yeah, and maybe I can mention some more um, if we have time. Oh, no, we don't. Huh? Uh, let's, uh, sure, go ahead. Okay, so um, we... Um, yeah, we can credit all our, the people that are involved. So we have all these developers that um, maintain the projects and the documentation team translators. We have the PSC, uh, which you can see here. We have sponsors that support us with hardware or infrastructure or um, other things and maybe it could be interesting for you to get involved and there you um yeah could contact us on the mailing list you can meet us on rsc and there are several ways to get involved so you could work on the project on testing the website documentation and you're really welcome to join so translation is done on transifex and we will have um, the Phosphorg Community Sprint this Saturday. We will be there with OSU Live Team. So you're really um, welcome to join us and um, get to know the OSU Live project and the team. So that's uh, that's it from, from our side. Great. Thanks, guys. Very uh, interesting presentation and um, very valuable tool for the community to basically download all these and use these tools right out of the box for an SDI in a box, if you will. Um, I'm looking at the questions. So 
here we're seeing, um, is there a date for the launch of QGIS version four? Um, maybe related to that, how, how do you guys deal with versions of the various projects and how do you balance this all? Yeah, that, that's the tricky part. Uh, so basically we are following some, let's say Debian rules, which means that whenever that something is stable and it's uploaded in, into Debian unstable, we are testing it and we see if it's available, if it's ready to be shipped. Uh, sometimes we are trying a, a more new version if, if available, but we are trying to remain on the stable side of things. So this is why, for example, QGIS that is mentioned is, is not on the latest version on the disk, it's uh, one or two versions behind. So for QGIS 4, I would not expect this to land uh, on the next OSG Live, even if it is released from the QGIS team, it might take another version to, to show up. But maybe we can mention one thing. So we, we um, publish OSG Live with all these projects, but in the end you are free to install more, um, pro more programs or install newer versions. So it's not fixed, it's flexible. Okay, excellent. Nice to see the extensibility. Um, there's another comment, I think. That I hope the map Libra.js and other vector tile related OSS projects will be included in the in the next uh, in the next release. You guys have any comments around vector tile projects? We need to have more volunteers to to show up and maintain those projects or make the application for those projects to enter. So what we need is for a maintainer to step up and say, okay, I will, for example, apply to get a new project in OSG Live. Then one has to provide the installation script, uh, the quick start and the and the and the um, and the quick start and and the overview page. So if you have all those three, if if it's open source, uh, we are we will try to include it uh, in the next version. So we do have um, a, a vector tile server included, actually in version 13, um, but we definitely need more. Uh, yeah. So if people are interested, they can just they can help us because it's so so much software we cannot maintain it on our own all the time. Yeah, and maybe you don't have to be a developer to provide a project to OSU Live. You could be a user of the software and um, do the work, do, uh, do the documentation, do the testing, and um, yeah, do your part um, to to bring a project on OSU Live. Great. Uh, another question: How does translation work? Is it possible to update the website before a release? Uh, I will take. Uh, I will be speaking about translation. Uh, so the translation is uh, mostly done on Transifex on the Transifex platform. Like uh, a lot of uh, OSG project, uh, I send uh, the link uh, within the chat. Maybe you should should have seen it before. So you are free to join us, and we have um, around twenty languages available. Uh, we just ship. Uh, languages that are uh, um, mature enough to be shipped. Mostly it's all overview uh, translated and we ship it in uh, so so we have enough material in one language to include it. Um, the second question, is it possible to update the website? The website reflects the documentation within the eyes so we don't like to change it uh, too much. We update it Maybe once or two, twice a year, so it's kind of stable to to match uh, the ISO, and we only fix the typos and things like that. If, if you uh, ship a new version with uh, maybe a new version of QJS, there it, it it won't be working with a later version, so it it has to be stable. But we have two uh, two versions. Uh, also, I put it in the, uh, on the website. Uh, we also uh, have a GitHub uh, Pages version, which is more uh, recently updated. I hope it responds to the question. 
Great. And uh, just just to recap, um, getting involved is as easy as uh, signing up and, and adding your project or volunteering to do some documentation or testing. So it sounds like there's a very low barrier uh, in terms of getting involved in this, you know, open open community and uh, an inclusive project. Awesome. Yeah, that's what we try. <laughs> Thanks. That's awesome. Great. Thanks, guys. Great presentation. Thank you very much. Feel free to reach out. Bye bye. Enjoy Thank the you. conference. Bye.